why is this dude so knowledgeable? Like, he's handsome. He's a doctor. He also is, like, weirdly knowledgeable on professional grooming. Like, it blows my mind. I'm saying it. It's time to wash the flu. Hi, Bobby. So this is one of the Bengal, Bengal Newfoundlands. I'm trying to be like that guy that shows the cats on the TikTok. Oh, he's too heavy. Okay, you ready? It's time. Okay, y'all suck. You said Dr. Mike got a fucking Tibetan master too. This is not, this is a new feed. It's this is a time. Newfoundland. You're stinky. I took you out in the rain. You were running around the field. Let's go in. Oh, look at that. Oh God. Oh my Lord. Look at that. This is what I'm saying though. This dog, holy fuck. That's a big ass dog. Bath time. Excellent job. <laughs> Bear's really easy to wash, actually, because he's very well trained, though. Holy fuck. He's just like down for anything, but I like to. T Based on this view, this dude lives in an eight figure apartment. Yeah, you know what's funny about this? Like, Dr. Mike's apartment, this apartment that he's in, in New York City. I mean, he has 10 million subscribers, of course, but this apartment in New York City is mo more expensive than my house. Tell him like I do with my patients, all the things I'm gonna do before I do them. So Bear, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the water. Then I'm gonna wet you. I'm gonna get you very wet. Then once that happens, I'm gonna get the shampoo and I'm gonna lather you up. Once you're fully lathered, I'm gonna make sure I get all ends washed of you from top to bottom. Do you agree? High five if you agree. Okay, you agree, good. The problem with this water is sometimes it has really bad control over temperature. So I wanna make sure that it's not too hot because for dogs, hot water is no bueno. See, he's like, he's doing the, the anxiety yawns. Craziest thing about Classic. Bear is that he looks huge when he's all poofy. Dr. Mike's dog is a certified therapy dog and can work in a hospital that's so far. When he starts getting- No, this is an incredibly well-trained dog. Wet. He's actually really skinny. Bear, how are you feeling about this? He's such a great His, dog uh, owner. Holy shit. His fur is actually a little oily, the top layer, so it prevents water from getting in. Bear, can I have a kiss while I wash you? Thank you. <laughs> So you gotta be careful when you get dog shampoo like I did. I got the one that's concentrated. So you're gonna need to dilute it pretty heavily. Okay, this is your shampoo. All right, Luffy. Oh, it's so heavy. This is the version of a dog sponge. So you wanna introduce it to the dog so he, he feels safe with it, lets him smell it. I mean, Bear is really laid back, so it doesn't matter at all what you do with him, but. Okay, now we wash the What a well-trained sure we dog. Deep into his skin folds. The good part about this rubbery thing is it does a good job at getting through the fur, even knots. Are you ready for all this care? Yeah, man, I've done this already. Also, Dr. Mike will probably go to a groomer normally. This is for YouTube, you know what I mean? Which makes sense, this is an awesome video. He trained the shit out of his uh, dog and he wants to show it off a little bit. Also, when you do this with your dog, it should be a fun thing. So like bringing your dog snacks is great. Bear, do you want a snack? Or do you want to just lick my face? Your breath's gonna smell better after I brush your teeth though. Look how much fur comes out of this guy. <laughs> oh! Bear, I feel like you're concentrating on solving a math problem. Which math problem are you thinking about? Clean the butt. He doesn't like that. Good boy, Bear. Good boy. Oh my God, look at this. Dr. Mike got canceled before for saying obesity isn't healthy. That is an ins First of all, that is the most doctor thing on the planet to say. And secondly, it's true. It, like, yes, it's not healthy to be obese. Like, what an in I don't believe that that's what he said. Okay. And also, that, again, saying obesity is not healthy. Like, doctors are... Doctors are literally... The most fat phobic motherfuckers on the planet, followed set closely by EMTs, okay? Straight up. So, like, doctors are, doctors are incapable of not being fat phobic. And, and in, in many ways that actually completely are outside of the bounds of, like, medicine. Nurses too, yeah, but EMTs. Especially EMTs, because they, they go on call and uh, routinely have to carry people. So they get like even more fat phobic than they would be. You know how many overweight EMS providers there are in Lamont? Yeah, f f certainly. There's hella overweight nurses too. The fuck do you mean? You know how many, o do you know how many like fat nurses exist? Yeah, that doesn't stop them from being fat phobic. 
I had a raging eating disorder as a teen girl. My doc congratulated me on losing 60 pounds in two months. No concern at all. That's insane. Also, I doubt that he got canceled for saying obesity is not healthy, which is uh, true. There is truth to that. Um, but, uh, but like I said, these fucking doctors are incredibly fat phobic. If you didn't know that, uh, what about gay dudes in WeHo? Doctors are more fat phobic than gay dudes in WeHo. I have a special like sham wow esque product here where you can actually put your hands inside of this and just hug your dog like it's a giant little oofa. Giant little oofa. Look, it's like he's being born. <laughs> and I want to do this as much as possible before he starts flicking it off all over the place. Yeah. Okay, he did it. Nonetheless. Wow, this is soaked already. Then I have the next sham wow dog towel. These are super absorbent, so they do a great job at holding the water and pulling the water off the dog. Okay, come on. Oh. You see the floor is already soaked that he just... Dr. Mike responds to the fat phobia claims. I really want to like Dr. Mike on YouTube, but he really has some fat phobic tendencies. He's actually a fan of intermittent fasting, which is unbelievable to me considering he's a medical professional. Wait, what? It, wait, why would inter intermittent fasting is not unhealthy what the fuck professional in his most recent video he talked about gastric bypass surgery being good for long-term weight loss and just in general he's talked about obesity and quote unquote watching what you eat he's done videos where he tried certain fad diets for 30 days but i've never watched them so i don't know where he stands on keto for instance anyway it just goes to show that even doctors can still learn a lot in their own fields i have to respond to this uh, as well as many of these comments let's get into it Honestly, I was really disheartened, disappointed when I read this post. I'm not one usually to get upset uh, when I read controversial posts about something that I've said, but this one touched me. You know, I, I have a lot of patients who are overweight and obese who are struggling to lose weight, know that they need to for their health. <laughs> he said, I know fat people. I know fatties, dude. That's what he said. He said, listen, listen up, fatties. I know some of you, okay? because they don't want to die young. They don't want to have a heart attack at age 40. Or and Let me tell you, all these fatties, they don't want to die young, okay? Which is, will happen to you if you keep talking shit online, if you keep doing this, which you shouldn't be doing this. You should be doing this, both at the table and right now, okay? This is what you should be doing. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. He said, I'm not fat phobic. I have fat friends and fat uh, uh, clients, patients. How can you argue with a doctor about it being good or bad for your health to be obese? First of all, America. Secondly, uh, the internet. And last but not least, doctors do actually have a tendency to be so fat phobic, as we've talked about before, that they sometimes unironically will, like, it, there are instances of doctors literally not seeing, like, an actual issue within their patients because they immediately go to, oh, you're fat. Um, which is additionally funny because 60% of America is fat. So like modern doctoring in America probably needs to uh, overlook the your fat examination because sometimes motherfuckers just have cancer, okay? And like, yes, losing weight if you are morbidly obese will help with uh, your your cancer treatment even. You should probably still focus on the cancer thing or any other uh, issues that they might have. Not saying that this is what Dr. Mike is doing. Um, I'm sure Dr. Mike doesn't do that because he's a YouTube doctor. So YouTube doctors who are also have like actual patients are way more considerate and way more fucking cutting edge with their understanding of medicine. I myself am a YouTube politics guy. So what the fuck do I know about medicine in general? I'm just simply telling you that doctors do sometimes have a, uh, tendency to hyper focus on uh their patients being overweight which is ironic because yes uh it is technically true that like if you are obese morbidly obese like that's going to cause you issues so like being sick and then on top of that being obese makes it worse for you versus uh you know being sick and being skinny uh, there's a big push now to educate doctors on how to talk about weight loss in a more productive way. I'm sure Dr. Mike is fairly nuanced and kind to his patients. Is the older docs that are dismissive and more brutal to their obese patients? Yeah. 42% of adults are obese, but 73, including overweight. Yeah. 
Dr. Mike has a video on the fat false diagnosis slash fat phobic bias. Yeah, I like I said, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way Dr. Mike doesn't know all that shit and hasn't addressed it before. But yeah, it's this weird predicament though because it's this weird situation because like on the one hand, yes, doctors 100% need to overlook uh, or like look beyond obesity as like the main marker. But also on the other hand, they're not wrong when they say that like, yeah, losing weight would lead to uh, less issues. So it's this weird double bind where, you know, just do the doctoring, which is like beyond the obesity situation. Like I said, this is not about Dr. Mike. This is just about doctor. Uh, this is just about doctors in general, you know? Why did this dog stream turn into a Dr. Mike stream? Because Dr. Mike has a new feet and a very, he's a very hey, good dog are you happy? trainer. Yeah. Who's happy? Hang out here for a second. Tell me this doesn't look like the twin turbo back end of a, of a jet. You might look at this contraption. Okay, that shit's like a professional groomer equipment, which I should probably order as well. And say to yourself, why? It's selling me. Dr. Mike is selling me, dude. Bro, this dog, literally, this was how she was yesterday too, where she basically doesn't do anything for the entire day. She just like floops around, okay? She'll walk from one spot to the other and then just plop her entire little but also kind of relatively large body onto the next cold spot on the ground. But it's so funny because, like, she does it like she's been, uh, you know, she had such a busy day. Now, I know that's, like, puppy tendency, right? I know that that is, like, a big part of how puppies are. But it is so funny that, like, She's just like, oh, man, I had a long, hard day playing with this chew toy for, like, three seconds. You know what I mean? Get her a cooling mat when she stops teething? Yeah, I'm going to do that. She's working hard at being cute? Yeah, no, literally, she's like, fuck, man. Another day of being an absolute cutie under the belt. Not easy. Y'all don't understand. I've been paying taxes and smoking cigs. Why in the world do you need such a crazy dog blower? Dog skin is too sensitive, so you can't really use heat. The goal with dogs and drying them, especially big floofy dogs like Bear, is to blow the wetness off of them. I'm learning so much. Uh-oh, slow stretch. When you blow really forceful air, you could actually see his skin. And that allows me, as I go through, to see if there's any rashes or anything else popping up in the skin. Also, a mistake that a lot of people make with these, if you go in like circles like this, you could actually create tangles in your dog's hair. So the goal is to always do it in one direction. Dude, why is this fucking dude, why is this dude so knowledgeable? Like, he's handsome, he's a doctor. He also is like, what, weirdly knowledgeable on professional grooming? Like, it blows my fucking mind. Oh, my low back. Oh, the tail stays wagging, right? What? The tail stays wagging, yeah. This is like a shearing blade. It's a comb, but on the other end, it's really sharp. So when you're going through his floof, it could actually take extra hair out and tangles out. A lot of dog groomers will avoid using these because some people... And like 24 years old? No, he's not. He's like, literally, I think he's my age, right? Let's look. Dr. Mike age. Oh my God. He's like only a couple years older than me. Fuck that. Yeah. He's two years older than me. God damn it. Fucking guy. He's so successful and handsome and doesn't even look his age. But overuse them and start like ripping him. Like this motherfucker is 33. Look at him. Look at me. Like I'm, I'm 31. You know what I mean? I look like shit. They're out of their dog. So you have to be really conscientious about how you use this. <laughs> Get a new fee. They said it'd be fun. They said. When hair clumps together on a dog like this, oxygen and air stops being able to pass through it. The dog becomes more vulnerable to skin infection. Camille Art, thank you for the five. Get the subs. I had a groomer for, for about a year, and then they just started jacking up their prices to like $600, even though this takes only two hours. I mean, they do come to you, but then their scheduling system was a mess. 
and I actually enjoy doing this. The only negative part about this is obviously the hair everywhere, so you have to vacuum after. And then also the fact that uh, my water pressure sucks. <laughs> but otherwise, it's great. It's very therapeutic. It's probably why like moms or dads play with like braid their children's hair. It's like, it's fun for them. And you also see that in other primates. I think monkeys love grooming each other too. I feel like I'm a monkey right now, grooming a bear. Interspecies. Bro, it's because you're making them work three hours, three dogs in a single hour. Do you think he likes it? Don't look at this guy. <laughs> Who's he talking to? This is a wire brush. It's like good for finishing his coat, but I- Bro, this dog is, is this dog, I, I don't know. Is this like newfie behavior? Are they like this? Cause like when I used, to, when I used to wash, sorry, when I used to wash fish, he would freak out, dude. He would fucking freak out, dude. I also use it in between to sort of get some of the smaller tangles out before I go with the bigger brush. Didn't he get bigger? It's because he gets floofier. <laughs> Just crazy. Again, whatever thing you use on your dog, introduce it to the dog. Bear hasn't seen this in a little while because I wasn't clipping him. So I need him to be calm when I turn this on, turn that on, let him see that nothing bad happens. And then basically I just want to clean up the fur in between his paws here. Because when it overgrows, it can be a problem. I'm actually surprised Bear is so comfortable with letting me play with his paws because when he was a puppy, he actually cut his paw real bad. And I had to take staples out of it after he got an operation. And he let me do it like a champ. But it's important when your dog's a puppy that you handle their paws regularly for this exact reason, so that you can groom your dog. Here we have a Dremel, which is how I shorten Bear's nails. If you actually apply a slight pressure to the top of the nail and to the bottom of the paw pad like this, you can express the nail a little bit further, which will allow you to visualize the vein better. It's time. Wow, to take that part, that part is impossible. That is crazy. This is the best. This is the best trained dog on the planet. I used, I used to do that. I used to do that on stream. I had that exact same fucking grinder. That shit is so. What the fuck? I can't believe. You can express the nail a little bit further, which will allow you to visualize the vein better. It's the most, it's the scariest thing too, because you don't want to like accidentally uh, go into the nail bed and it's easy to get into the nail bed because then, you know, you're hurting your little pupper and it blows my fucking mind how this dog is so perfect. Like the vet will trim the nails for you. Yeah, sometimes easier for news with clippers. Yeah, it's, it's because you're not skilled with the Dremel. You got soft hands, brother. Dude, look at him. He's a doctor. He has the softest hands. Newt. It's time to take care of your gums and teeth to make sure that you don't get cavities. Bear is a little annoying when brushing his teeth because he likes to eat the toothbrush. Okay, so we're gonna get some of the toothpaste on the toothbrush and Bear will give you his teeth and allow you to brush them. This, yeah, damn, that dog's got and some white ass teeth. Like I said. This is not a glamorous job but it's a job that someone has to do. The hardest part is getting the back teeth. Yeah, I'm getting those back teeth. Don't chew the toothbrush. Just wait, wait before you- Get your dog an actual mattress to sleep on. We'll help with joints later in life. What? A mattress? Chew the toothbrush, please. I actually don't mind when he chews so much on the back ones, because then it's like he's helping me brush them. Next, we need to clean the inside of, well, not really the inside, more like- or Stroke it. Outer in- why you gotta do this to me? When you did you really mean when you said America deserved dog piss? Yes, and it's the top of the hour ad break. First of all, there's so much going on here. Number one, I can't believe that you've already put like a Kaya emote out there. Okay. <coughs> Number two, at the top of the hour, there's two emotes now. Kaya sleep. That's crazy. This is, this is actually crazy. Y'all are going bananas mode with this.
Look at this. And yes, at the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Downhill Zeus, thank you for the five gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Inside of Bear's Ear, and I have these special wipes that my vet recommended. They're called Vet's Best. They have witch hazel, aloe vera, and tea tree oil. All good ingredients against infections. The goal is not to go inside your dog's ear fully, but just to visualize the ear and get the gunk out. Bear gets a lot of gunk in his ears, again, because of his uh, floopiness of his ears. See how gross it is already? I also sometimes will use a solution if there's like a lot of earwax or a lot of buildup that you actually put into his ear and then let him shake his. It's crazy how much he's like, this dog is so incredibly well behaved. Ear out. Oh, and a lot of people don't let their dog shake their heads when they're cleaning their ears. Definitely let them because that could mean some water got in there and the way that they get it out is by shaking. Last part of Bear's grooming routine. Yeah, of course, top of the hour bot gave it a 9-7. It was a chatter. Chatters give chatter jebates literally a 10 10. Like, I, I rarely ever see chatters give chat jebates anything lower than a fucking, uh, you know, 9.75. Okay. Chatter solidarity is, is uh, too, too much. Is to get him outside of the bathroom away from all this hair. Before we move on to the next section, status check in of the bear floof hair. All right, part two, we want to get him out of the bathroom because it's really wet in there and hairy. So we want to do the finishing touches in here. He's already coming to join us. All right, Noof, we're going to finish your coat now and blow you out. And then I'm I thought his name was Bear. Is it Noof? Oh, my God. Look, 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 look. look. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's dreaming. She's running around in a Tibetan mountain right now. Chasing fucking sheep around. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Running. A fucking cutie she is. I'm gonna do a little haircut for you because you're getting a little bit too poofy. High five if that's okay. Okay, good. Play dead. Play dead. Oh my god. Not the gl most glamorous part of owning a dog, shaving his beard. But he gets a lot of rashes here because of the moisture gets trapped. Isn't this incredible, Dad? <laughs> well, how would bears survive in the wild? That's my question. He would get so matted so quickly on his first day of being wet. He would get skin infections galore. I think That's this is true. already more fur than that we had in the bathroom. Yeah, this is your favorite part. I know. I know. The least glamorous. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I totally understand why a groomer would charge $600 for this. Like, the fuck, dude? Like, this is a three-hour process. Like, it's nighttime now. It might even be longer than a three-hour process, dude. What the fuck? That is a fuck ton of, oh my gosh, she's kicking. That is a fuck ton. No, this is not weekly. No, 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 no. Don't be crazy. No, no, no. This is like, this is a big, this is a big thing. You probably, I don't know how Newfoundlands work, but pretty sure like one, if you brush him once a week, also, no shot. He doesn't have enough to pay that price. Lol, motherfucker's a doctor and a YouTuber. Yeah, no, I'm sure he does. He just did this for the content, probably. I'm like, I assume he has no time. Newfoundland should be groomed daily. It's fucking insane. What? Yeah, also, he makes... Yeah, he said he likes it. So he probably does it every now and then if he has time to do it. Which makes sense. I mean, he clearly has done it a lot. This is, like, not a one-off. Like, he knows how to fucking groom this dog really well. Especially, you want to know how I know he did it himself? You want to know how I know? Newfoundland owner here, I have to do this twice a day to my baby boy? Yeah, y'all are crazy then. Okay. I know, I know he's done it before because of the way he used that Dremel. That is an experienced man, Okay. He knows that he, has to, he needs to trim the dick hair because uh, all dogs with long coats, 
uh, will trap a lot of moisture in their coats when they get wet or trap a lot of moisture and then they'll have a lot of skin problems. So he's right. You do need to fucking groom these dogs a lot. Um, I don't know. It's just crazy that uh, I'm kidding. I don't have a dog. Fuck you, man. Take a second off. Part of having a dog here. He's looking back at me as I do it. Yeah, clean my butt. Gotta keep the back area hygienic. Right, Noof? Look at the shine on this coat. This is a healthy mammal right here. How do you feel? <laughs> you smell nice? Mmm. Who's happy? Who's happy? Go give me a hug. Yeah, you're happy. Yeah. Think your breath smells nice. All right, the floof is clean. He's dry. Dude, Dr. Mike is such a fucking dreamboat. It's crazy to me. He is such a fucking dreamboat, dude. For the most part, he's happy. Look at how much fur leaves this animal. And honestly, if I sat here brushing him for another hour, probably I could double this. But as you can tell, it's pretty easy to groom a dog that behaves well. So it's important to handle your dog early, get them used to you being the owner and playing with them and cleaning their ears and their teeth and their paws, because then it becomes a rewarding experience for the both of you. And that's why Bear's a happy pup, right? Yeah, good boy. Check out Bear's video when I first got him. Click here to check that out, and as always, stay happy.